This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Holy days are those days. And in those holy days, we are here to remember the great glory of our ancestors that were strong enough, powerful enough to fight and to go against the stream of the people around them, the nations that were surrounding them and believing in the truth, in the truth of the Almighty and the Creator Himself, He is the Almighty, He is the one that has all the power, all the abilities to change nature and to bring completion and redemption into our days. And in those days, we need to remind ourselves on the war that took place in the mind of our ancestors while they were fighting for that belief, for that faith in that Holy One, in the One and Only, the Creator Himself. Many people are struggling because they assume that the rest of the world is not struggling like they are. They're assuming that other people are going through easier times in life and they think that the reason for their sorrow and their pain and their challenges and difficulties is coming because of their lackings, of their weaknesses, of their foreign thoughts, of their lack of confidence, their lack of faith. But the truth is, and it's written, that all the obstacles and all the difficulties and all the challenges that we are going through today went through, went on all those righteous ones. They went through all those difficulties that we are facing today as well. Think about Abram. It seems to us like we're talking about the pillar of the world, a person with no um, no barriers, the strongest ones, the warrior, the man and the legend, the one that brought down faith to the world. Do you think that it's easy to be that individual, that first person that will believe in Hashem, that will go against the faith of his family, against the faith of his um, nation, people that were surrounding him, kingship that was ruling in those days that was so cruel and vicious and he was such a holy person and so strong that he dared to go and to fight and to argue and to reveal the truth and the light out from the darkness and to bring down the prophet the prophecy of the creator to the common people that lived in his generation. Now, it was not an easy thing to do. It was not a simple mission for a person to go and to swim against the stream, jumping into the ocean, setting a goal in front of his eyes and going and, and conquer the world with his faith. It's not an easy task. It's a hard mission. And he went through his doubts and he went through his difficulties. But he was always strong not to back off and not to give up on those, on those battles from, from time to time. Now today, in our generation, we are facing a similar situation. And it is true that today... Thank Hashem, there is a lot of, like, there is, there is bounty of, 
of everything that you would ask for yourself, for your Avodat Hashem, like 200 years ago, if people would want to have an etrog and four minim for Sukkot, so they had to go and, and to ask from people that lived in, in Israel to send um, to send to them to Europe or to, to wherever they lived. They couldn't find that Rogim. You couldn't find that Rogim in Poland, in, in, in Russia, in, uh, in, in Hungary. You couldn't find that Rogim over there. There are no palm trees in every corner in, uh, in Poland. So what can you do? So people from Israel would go for three months in boats, for four months in boats, in ships. They would go from one land to the other, from one port to the next, and hopefully would come with their merchandise to, to Pauline. And then in Pauline, go and spread those 20 etrogim that they brought, go spread those 20 lulavim, 50 lulavim that they brought between all the people. If they haven't been rotten or destroyed or 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 or, um, or been took by by the by, by the officers in the port, why you brought those lemons? So go and spread those twenty at Rogim between two thousand communities, between five hundred communities. Like, what are you gonna do? It's crazy. So every village would receive one at Rog. And 500 people, 2,000 people would come and everyone would say the same bracha on the same etrog and everyone would hold that etrog. Can you promise that that etrog was clean and perfect like the etrogim that we have today? Today you go to those markets of etrogim and lulavim and forminim and you have such bounty over there. You don't know which to choose for yourself. Like, oh, I want one like this, like that, like... Moroccan etrog, Yemenite etrog, from the Israel, from the Holy Land, like Ashkenazi, Sephardi. So it's true, you have such bounty, but that bounty didn't really help us to find Hashem. That's the, the main problem. That bounty is just confusing us in a worse way even than, than people would be confused in different and earlier generations because today you're going to think to yourself that only if you will have the most cleanest etrog only if you'll have the most expensive arba minim or whatever so then you're fulfilling your obligation in Chag Sukkot and then Chag Sukkot all those holy days of Sukkot doesn't worth a thing if you couldn't find the right etrog if you couldn't find the right arba minim and it's exactly the same about learning Torah. Like, in different generations, earlier generations, it was so hard to learn and you barely could find books. People wouldn't print books. People would, started to print books only 200 years ago. The first print uh, machines and, and shops started and developed 200 years ago, 220 years ago. Before of that, people would have to write, handwrite the books. You couldn't distribute thousands and thousands of books, that every bookcase will be full of, of hundreds of books, or thousands of books. You barely could find the, the books to learn from. There, was no, there were no books. And today, you have millions of books out there. And no one can come to the right conclusion. You can open the books and you have libraries and, and bookcases with hundreds and thousands of books. And in every house you have 10, 20, 50, 100, 1,000 books in every house. And like, are you sitting and learning? And when you're sitting and learning, are you coming to the right conclusions out of, out of, out of the learning? So what, what actually happened? What is the challenge of our generation? What that happened to us is that we fell to that place of not believing in ourselves and were so terrified not to be right, not to be pure, that instead of making sure that we will be holy and righteous and pure, instead of that, what that we're doing 
is running around like terrified mice and and justifying ourselves 24 7 in every situation trying to claim and to to pretend to be righteous instead of really being righteous instead of really being pure what that we're doing is pretending and acting like we are pure and claiming to be pure instead of really working on our purity and on our mind to be holy and 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 straight people are feeding themselves on rumors on people's other people's opinion all day long and telling themselves all day long stories on how they are getting holier and more righteous and more pure by fulfilling the obligation of other people's opinion like answering the expectations of other people if that author, if that righteous man wrote in his book that in Chag Sukkot you're not supposed to leave the Sukkah and you cannot leave the Sukkah and every moment that you are out of the Sukkah so it's an eternal loss, it's something that you cannot understand so instead of being happy from every moment of being in the Sukkah and appreciating it you hate the fact that you need to leave the Sukkah for a second, for a minute, for an hour and you start chasing yourself and blaming yourself that you're not that holy and that the people that are taking you out of the Sukkah they become to be your enemies they become to be the reason why you are not achieving that holiness and purity that you imagine you make yourself believe that you will achieve that holiness if you will stay in the Sukkah for seven days, for eight days but in reality no one really is busy on being holy and being humble and being righteous just being scared of not fulfilling the obligation of not doing what that other people think that is the most important thing in the world but we are not going into the depths of our spirits really to feel the connection with the holy days with the sukkah, with the lulab, with arbata minim with all those things that have been given to us to celebrate with instead of that we're running and living our lives in fear and in pressure and in anxieties and I don't mind that I don't mind that people will talk about me, that people will have thoughts about me like what is he saying, what is he talking about, whatever, like I know what I'm talking about and I know where I came from and I remember where I came from and I know exactly how I've been taught to chase myself and to blame myself and to hate myself on every failure and even if the failures were not my fault and even if the things that I couldn't achieve were, were not available for me at all there, was, there were things that been offered to me and been suggested to me to keep and to do but in reality there was no base, there was no foundations, there was no real way for me to keep and to be so, so observant and so um, perfect to be able to achieve all those goals that had been set for me to achieve. So in reality all those things that had been offered to me were just pulling me in the nose, just like making me desire things that were never there in the first place and I'll tell you the thing the thing is that when you drop off all that foreign method of serving Hashem in that crazy way and you just really connect yourself to Hashem from inside and you just 
try to really be in touch with the Creator and you try to speak with Him about what that you're going through and what that life um, offers you and what that is um, open for you and the real options that are served and open for you in life, please. When, when you're really connecting yourself to your true self, to what that really happens inside of you, then the gates of heaven are being opened for you from within. And instead of living your life based on the approval of other people that are always telling you, oh yes, amazing, yeshav koach, praiseworthy, you made it, like whatever, and respecting you and really not feeding your soul, really not giving anything to your soul, and you always feel empty-handed, even if you achieve the most, even if you fulfill your obligations in the, in the most, like, in the highest way of them all, even more than you've been expected to do, you never feel that you found anything, and you always feel empty, but when you're doing things with heart, with real connection, and you're trying to understand the real meaning of what that you do, so then you start finding the live spirit of the Creator inside Torah and Mitzvot. Because when we are only following other people's opinions and methods and advice and ways, even if those people are very, very righteous, even if those people were very, very pure, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are following the path and destiny that been set for us by Hashem. And what do I mean? For an example, you cannot expect a person that have five children to function like a young guy that is 20 years old. Or you cannot expect a person that is 60 or 70 years old to run in the same speed of a 30 years old. You cannot expect a Baal Tshuva that never learned anything in his life and doesn't know and is not aware to the customs and he haven't grew up in that religious environment you cannot expect him to function in the same clean way and with the same um, quiet and relaxation and, and, and in a gentle way like a person that grew up in, in a religious area. It's like you are talking about different people and to all those people you gave the same book, the Shulchan Aruch, and now you expect everyone to follow it. It's a problem. So I'll tell you what the problem. The problem is not in the Shulchan Aruch. Because really, when you open the Shulchan Aruch, the book of Jewish rules, you can see that you still, inside that book, have many options. There are opinions, ideally, and you have opinions after the fact. You have opinions in this situation and in that situation. And there are also certain paragraphs that are guiding you to go and to consult with a teacher, with a rabbi that will have the ability to recognize your real situation because sometimes your real situation is between the lines, is, is, is not written in a clear way for you to take out the Psaq Halacha, the real way that you should do, that you should work, from what it is written. So the problem is not in the Shulchan Aruch. The problem is with the teachers that are teaching the wisdom to us today. You go and in the synagogue, the rabbi will come and will speak. And if he's got some method, some way, some vision, so he will go and spit it out to the public like everyone's supposed to run in the same speed. And in reality, those ones that are weaker, are slower, cannot understand completely, will always feel lacking. And those ones that are able to speed up, 
also gonna imagine to themselves like they already achieved the levels of angels and, and holy servants when they're not achieving basically almost anything because in reality they are misinterpreted the real intention of the author of the Shulchan Aruch or of that one that gave us the Torah Hashem that the main purpose was that we will be human that we will be nice to each other, that we will care about each other. Not that everyone will, will have a mission to be more radical and more more frum, more orthodox, more, more, more observant, more whatever, to have a larger kippah, a longer tzitziot, a longer beer, like a, a, a more expensive etrog, like what are those nonsense? Like we said before, in Poland 200 years ago, you couldn't find, barely could find one etrog to all, a whole village. And like people would come from different villages to say the blessing on one etrog. And I promise to you that that etrog was not the most mehudar etrog, was not the cleanest etrog. It's an etrog that went in a leather bag from Israel for three and a half months in, in, the, in the backpack of, of, of some person that made his way in the sea and in the winter and in the summer and across the desert on camels. Like, it was a fine dog, hopefully. And like 2,000 people were, were, would, would be, have the Mary to say the blessing on that dog and would be so happy and grateful. And today you'll find yourself in front of 2,000 clean etrogim and you don't know how to pick for yourself and every one of them will cost more than $100 and you're losing your mind like because you want to buy an etrog meudar but really you don't need to do all that that's not the will of Hashem because if you don't have $100 for etrog you don't need to feel bad you need to always have confidence that Hashem is with you and that Hashem he loves you no matter how much money you have in your pocket and how many hours you're able to sit in, sit in front of an open book and how many pages of Mishnayot you're able to memorize by heart and how many Masechtot you finished until today and if you're able to accept Shabbat one hour earlier and to, for, to, to, to keep Shabbat one hour later time Rabbeinu Tam or even later like Hashem is with you and that's supposed to be a basic understanding of a believer. Hashem is with me. Now, let's see how I can serve Him. Let's see what I can do, what really He wants from me, what really the Creator expects me to do. Now He gave us those holy days, He gave us the Torah, He gave us the Shabbat, He gave us the Amim Tovim. Let's see how to make the best out of those precious good stones that He gave us, but not losing our minds to our fears and to the pressure that is pressuring us from outside. Because the pressure on buying an etrog that will be so expensive is coming from two sides. Or from arrogant people that wants to make themselves more important than others. And because they had the ability to buy an etrog in 150 or 250 or 1000 dollars, you can find the etrog in 1000 dollars, no problem. Like, you can find them. Maybe you can't buy them, but you can find them. So, or that it's coming because that there are people that want to feel more important and, 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 and successful than others, and they had the financial ability to find that unique etrog that no one else have, and they want to feel better. They want to feel unique, and it's wrong, and it's evil. It's not right. You're not better because you have more money or that you have connections or whatever. Or from the side of the merchant or the people that wants to sell those etrogim and they're pushing you to buy the most expensive etrog. But in reality, when you come to that understanding that in Sukkot, 2,000 people in one village were able to come and to say the same blessing on the same etrog, even if it was the chief rabbi of that village or the, 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 the wagon driver, and they would all come together to say one blessing on the same etrog that crossed lands for three, four months in, in, in ships to, to make his way from Israel to, to, to Poland, 
So it's okay to say blessing on, on any one of those etrogim that you'll find in the market. And to feel that you're not okay because of not buying a cleaner etrog, it's to downgrade Hashem, it's to downgrade the mitzvah of etrog, it's to downgrade yourself, it's to destroy mm -hmm. your holidays, it's to destroy what that Hashem represents. Because those people are coming and erasing the name of Hashem with, with, with their rudeness, with, 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 such, with, their, with, with their approach. Because for the regular people, for those people that are innocent, that just wants to keep Torah mitzvot, the level of keeping Torah mitzvot becomes to be impossible. Because you must buy the most expensive at Rogue. And you must pray in that synagogue and not in another. And you must be in Uman for Rosh Hashanah. And you must have, I don't know which kind of tzitziot. And you must be in the Holy Land. And you must make Aliyah. And you must finish the Shas. And you must wake up before of dawn. And you must do Tikkun Chatzot. And you must, and you must. And in reality, not everyone are able to make Aliyah, or to make it to Uman to Rosh Hashanah, or to buy the most expensive etrog. But if everyone, like, 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 like cattle, like animals, are running and, 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 and pushing and, and trying to achieve it, so like you're not part of the herd by being who you are, a little bit slower, a little bit more poor, a little bit elder, a little bit, like, whatever, normal even, don't want to push, don't want to waste $300 on Rabat Amini. Now, they're making you feel like, hey, you disgrace the mitzvah, you disrespect the mitzvah, you don't care about the etrog. It's not true. I do. I love it. You can never know how much I love it. You don't have a clue how much I care. But you don't let me care. You don't let me love Hashem in my way. You don't let me sit and enjoy few verses that I'm able to sit and learn, few chapters that I'm able to sit and learn, because for you, if I haven't finished all Shas, if I haven't did all what you are telling me that is important, I'm nothing. So those people are coming and erasing the real name of Hashem. They are blocking the eyes of the innocent of ours, of the Baal Tshuva, of those ones that are sincere and honest and willing to do whatever it takes to find Hashem finally. And they don't let us because they're always uplifting the level of expectations. And in reality, it's not true because you should believe that Hashem is with you. And we have in this generation a problem with religion that religion for us been described and is being offered in a bent and twisted way. And now, if someone is coming like me, that I'm crazy, and like my wife also thinks I'm crazy, because why? I'll tell you why. Because I'm not scared, I'm not afraid to go and fight on what that I believe, even with the biggest rabbis. Now, you need to be a lunatic to go and to fight with like those mountains, with those people. But I'm doing my thing without caring what other people will say because it's in my blood. I feel the sorrow of our nation. I see the disgrace of the Torah. I see how those people are taking the Torah from us. And they themselves, those ones that are supposed to teach the Torah, they... It's their fault. They're not letting us learn. Because they're forcing you that if you want to learn, it must be in the yeshiva. And if the, you want to learn in the yeshiva, so you must do this. And if you must do this, it must be in that way. And if you must have a hat, you must have a suit, you must have black pants, you must have black shoes. You're like, and if you don't, like if your family will kill you for that, so like, I'm sorry, you can't come to this shul. You can't come to this synagogue. Like, when all those things are happening around us, and they keep on uplifting the level of expectations, 
So instead of handing the Bible and the Torah and the wisdom to the ones that are poor and in need, they're taking it from them and keeping it to themselves. So I'm crazy and I don't mind to be crazy. Even Nachshon ben Aminadav, that he jumped to the water. So I was explaining what that he did, his act as an heroic act. Why? Because of his faith. That is the way that I was explaining. I said, look at that man. He's jumping into the water and he's going with confidence and whatever and he's fighting his own doubts and whatever. But there is another aspect of looking at that act of Nachshon ben Aminadav. That Nachshon ben Aminadav is a person like us. And as a person that heard that there is an option, there was some kind of prophecy, there was an argument between the tribes, which are the tribe that is supposed to jump into the water. So there was a prophecy, there was an opinion that the sea was about to be open for them. So Nachshon ben Aminadav, while people were arguing what to do and if to do, he decided to sacrifice himself and to throw himself to the water while still having that option of drowning in the sea. When the sea even opened, so okay, everyone can walk in dry land. But when he jumped into the water, the water were covering the sea completely. There was no path, there was no crack, there was no way in. He jumped into the water risking his life. And if it will be open, so great, but if it won't be open, so he's drowning over there. And he took that on himself. So I mean, that way you feel very much alike because like, I don't mind to go and to risk myself because there is no risk. Because what that I am doing here right now, talking to you about those things that touched the heart, is only to say the truth. That's why I'm not scared to say it, because it is the truth. And I sat with big people and with real, real rabbis that admitted to me in their mistakes. And there are mistakes. And if you are denying those mistakes and you're trying to plaster everything and you're trying to cover everything and to make believe that everything is perfect, so like you are a liar. Because look at our people. Look at us. After 2,000 years and more of exile, we are not in good shape. We're not in a good condition. In reality, we are broken. In reality, we are sad and depressed. In reality, there are many people that are sick. There are many people that are poor. Many crazy people that lost their minds in worries and, and in anxieties and in fears and in pressure. Horrible poverty and lack of knowledge, ignorance. And people are in deep darkness. And you have more yeshivot than you had ever. And you have more books than you had ever. And you have more rabbis than you had ever. And you have social media that is teaching and spreading faith in the world more than you had ever. And you have more etrogim and you have more tefillin. And you have more bateknesiyot, synagogues. You have everything so many times more. But we are still falling. We are still going down. And you want to say, no, you have numbers of Baal Tshuva. Those Baal Tshuva, like me, are those ones that are falling and crashing the most. Because after five years of illusion, after ten years of illusion, of thinking, yeah, now I'm part of something, suddenly you realize that you're not good enough for Bet Yaakov. Suddenly you realize that you're not good enough for that in college. Suddenly you realize that you're not good enough for that yeshiva. Suddenly you realize that you're not good for Shiduchim. Suddenly you realize that you're not good. Suddenly you realize that you're not belong. So if you're not belong, after dropping all your past, Cutting yourself from your family, cutting yourself from your friends, cutting yourself from your life and sacrificing yourself for an illusion and in the end you realize it was an illusion. They betrayed me, they don't care about me, they don't love me, they don't accept me, they don't accept my children. So what in the world am I doing here? But you cannot say that on the religion. 
You cannot say that on Judaism. You cannot say that on the Bible, on Torah. But you can say that on the people that are twisting the real will of Hashem, that are bending the real rules of the Torah, that are making us feel rejected, that are blocking the path for us by putting the level of expectation in a place that no one can reach except of themselves. If you're a Belzer, so that's it. If you're not a Belzer, so you're out of the game. If you're a Breslever, great. And now if you're not a Breslever, so you're out of the game. That's nonsense. You can never be part of all those groups. You can never fulfill your obligation to all the rabbis that are around. So what's the secret? The secret is to find your own connection to Hashem and to the Torah. And to believe in yourself and in your feelings. And to count on your senses that are telling you that you should go in your own speed. And to learn from the books that are speaking to you. And to listen to the teachers that are inspiring you and giving you hope and planting hope and wisdom in you. Even if other people will disagree. And even will pe people won't, will reject you. And even if people won't accept you. And even if no matter what will happen to you, at least you will be left with your truth. You will be left with, with that feeling of completion, of being honest and being who you are. Don't ever push in line. Don't ever push in line not to buy a trog and not to go on the bus to the grave of Yosef HaTzadik and not to touch the tziyun of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev in Oman. Don't ever push in line. Don't ever let f someone else feel that he's not as good as you. Not by praising yourself and telling everyone how many Mishnayot or Gemarot you learned, and not by buying an etrog in $200 and showing off, I have a clean etrog, I have a clean etrog. Nonsense. Because you are blocking the eyes of Israel from understanding what Hashem really wants from them by doing that. By pretending I was in Uman in Rosh Hashanah. I haven't been in Uman in Rosh Hashanah. So what? Do you think that you're better than me because you've been in Uman? Are you a clown? Are you crazy? Do you know who I am? Do you know what I was doing in Rosh Hashanah? You don't have a clue. Maybe Rabbi Yenachman of Breslev was with me in Rosh Hashanah. Do you know? Do you know what I had in my mind in Rosh Hashanah? Do you have a clue? Did you see Rabbi Nachman of Breslev in Rosh Hashanah in Uman? Maybe Rabbi Nachman of Wesley was praying with me in my minyan. We were 12 people. Maybe he was the 13th one and you don't know it. Do you know? And maybe he wasn't with me and I just like live in my fantasy and he wasn't elsewhere. You don't know. In reality, we can never imagine to ourselves that we're better than someone else. And when we are trying to achieve our holiness, our purity, our success on the back of other people, to think that if we will be unique, if we will be special, if we will be faster, richer, more successful, I don't know what, that's a mistake. The real righteous one is that one that is able to go to the lowest places of them all and to uplift those ones that drowned in the swamps of despair and sadness. He is the real righteous one. That he has the ability to come down and to heal and to help and to support and to recover and to bless and, to, and, to, and just to show the real character that we are being asked to show in the good attributes of the Creator Himself that He planted and treasured inside of us. Being human, being nice, that's the purpose of all Torah Mitzvot. That person came to Hillel and asked him, how can I keep all Torah Mitzvot on when I'm standing on one leg? What did he told him? You should love your friend like you love yourself. Don't ever do what that you hate that being done to you. Don't ever do it to someone else. That's the Torah. And all the rest are explanations. Are only advice on how to reach that goal. No, but a tog in $300. But sukkah of 200 feet. But a lulav of 2 feet and a half. Whatever, 6 feet tall lulav he needs to have. Chazon Ish is like, he, 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 in his pocket he puts the Chazon Ish. 
People are crazy. People are crazy. We need to buy tefillin in $1,000 or $2,000 and he must be... You haven't been in Sukkot in Israel? No! I can't afford myself to go shopping in, in, in Walmart. What are you talking about? Poking the eyes of those ones that cannot fly. You haven't been in Uman in Rosh Hashanah? Poking the eyes of those ones that are not able. Instead of sitting with the people, sitting with them, let everyone feel good with themselves, showing everyone a good example of how to smile, of how to be positive about yourself, how not to give up. Share about your challenges, about your difficulties, instead of showing off your greatness and your success and your wealth and your whatever imaginary success that is not a real success because you can live I lived for 39 years of my life in Jerusalem in the most holiest neighborhoods of them all and I was serving Hashem in Mesirut Nefesh that it's hard to describe and always when I'm telling about what that I was doing even though that it sounds to me a little bit like whoa like really you were doing all those things and the answer is yes I did Every time that I finish telling something, Hashem brings another thing to my mind to remember. Because I was really doing like so much. I was doing, I was doing. My kids wouldn't see me. But what did I achieve? <laughs> what did I achieve because of that? If my kids couldn't see me in the house, if I didn't have time for my wife, if I didn't have time for what that is really precious in life, so where was my success? I did another six hours in Shimon, Shimon HaTzadik, Shimon the son of, of Yaakov, and I did another six hours in Dan Ben Yaakov, and I did another six hours in Bodedut, in Shimshon Gibor's mountain in front of Bet Shemesh, and I did another six hours in Rabbi Yudazem Lebovich, and in the next day I was at Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and yes, I did all those crazy things. Now, I'm telling you, after being in all that craziness, that if I was a liar while doing all those things, and neglected my family and forgetting them behind my back. Not that I'm saying that I was, but I'm saying if I was. If when I was doing all those things, I was forgetting where I came from and who were my people and who were my friends and who really needed me. If I did all those wonders but forgetting my roots and my reality, my surroundings, my beloved ones, so it's an empty book. It's a book of full of lies. It's not a real c containing holiness book. It's an empty book. Stories on this crazy lunatic that is jumping from one mountain to the other. It's not true. If you're sitting every day and you're learning and you're flipping pages and you remember those stories and those halachot and you know how to... But in reality, you are disconnected from your people your wife, she misses you, and you don't feel it. Your kids, they need you, and you don't care. And everyone becomes to be your obstacles, and everyone becomes to be your problems, and you are just need always to separate yourself from, from common people. So who are you? You're an idol. Who are you? You, you become foreign to your people. You become to be an outsider to your family. You lose your connection to the truth by being so holy, so to speak, so righteous, so called. Actually, nothing. You are nothing. Nothing but an empty book. Nothing but illusions and, and imaginations. In reality, we must understand that the Creator, He wants us to connect ourselves to the people, to love everyone to care about the souls, to remember people, to remember that there are people that need our advice, our love, our affection, our life experience, our wisdom. Our life experience is the knowledge that can feed thousands of other people, but if we will keep it to ourselves and not going to share and not going to talk and not going to tell, people will never learn from us.
And then what we achieved by learning, what we achieved by growing, by achieving all those achievements that we... Nothing. A sealed book that drowns in the depths of the sea. And that's it. No one can enjoy it. No. It was a liquor. It was a good wine. It was so precious. Drowned. Dunked. That's it. Lost in, in the depths of the sea. What's the use? Open your mouth. Be nice. Smile to people. Explain to people your deep understandings. Only to those ones that are willing to hear. Don't go now and talk and scream in the streets. You don't need to. Just be honest. Be a friend. Be a supporter. Be, be a friend. Be a nice person that is able to talk to others, to share. That's it, what it's all about. It's not about an expensive etrog and it's not an, about a fancy sukkah. And it's not about the most expensive or whatever, Mehudar pair of tefillin, and not about taking Shabbat one hour earlier and, and finishing Shabbat one hour later. It's not about that. It's about who were you inside Shabbat? Who were you while holding the etrog? Who were you? Were you while holding your expensive etrog? Remember that if maybe there is someone else that couldn't buy a etrog, that couldn't make it before the holiday, was that your thought while holding the etrog? Remember the, your fellow, Jew, fellow Jews that, that maybe someone needs an etrog. Like, why are you holding it? For yourself or for Hashem? Where is Hashem? Hashem is in the hearts of people. Hashem is walking between us. Hashem is checking us to see who we are inside. Pages of Gemara that you learned. What did you accomplish by learning those Gemara? Are you helping other people to learn Gemara because of your knowledge? Are you able to sit with other people now and to give them a hand or a back or a shoulder? Are you able to help them also to grow? You know how to read Hebrew. Amazing. So now are you teaching Aleph Bet or that you're just sitting, getting fatter with your knowledge? Oh, me. I know. Amazing. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.